30 years ago in the Brooklyn neighborhood of Crown Heights, a car accident set off four days of unrest. Two people died, hundreds were arrested. I'm Collier Meyerson, and my new show, Love Thy Neighbor, explores what came to be known as the Crown Heights Riot. It's a story about New York's first black mayor, the rise of Rudy Giuliani, and the Lubavitch Jewish and Caribbean communities sitting at the center of it all. You can listen to new episodes of Love Thy Neighbor every week wherever you listen, or you can binge the entire series exclusively on Odyssey. The NBA season is heating up, and the coverage you need is on Odyssey. Go deeper with daily coverage for every team with the Locked On Podcast Network, plus local sports station pods for your team. Need NBA hot takes? Check out Heat Check with Trista Crick. If you live for the drama of the NBA, you're going to love this pod. Plus, turn the NBA season into money season with expert betting tips and analysis for your favorite BetQL talent on You Better You Bet, the daily tip, and more. Turn this NBA season into a slam dunk. Listen now on Odyssey. It's Kevin Sheehan on the Team 980 and the Odyssey app. BetQL's Giving Props Contest is back for the big game. Whether you played this free-to-play contest the first three weeks of the postseason or not, you have a brand new shot at winning $2,000. Just go to betql.com slash props to sign up. BetQL has posted 10 Ups around the big game. It's easy. Make your picks and you could win two grand. Plus, as long as you sign up uh, at least 15 minutes before kickoff, you'll be entered for the chance at taking home the $10,000 grand prize. Head over to betql.com slash props or text props, P-R-O-P-S, to 20357 right now to make your picks. That's props to 20357. 357. Message and data rates may apply. By the way, our phone lines are open at 301 230 0980, our Valor Home listener lines, 301 230 0980. Simple question What would your expectations um, be if Russell Wilson ended up being the quarterback here in Washington? You know, give me a sense of what you think he brings. Like, what kind of difference does he make? Are you going to win a Super Bowl in the next five years? Are you going to be in a Super Bowl? Are you going to be, you know, in the playoffs every year? What would your expectations be? You know, the the question that we ended up on yesterday was kind of an Aaron Rodgers versus Russell Wilson. I feel just as strongly, if not more strongly, that, you know, Aaron Rodgers for three years would be my preference over Russell Wilson for five or six. But whatever, the... You know, a lot of you felt more in the way of Russell Wilson because of the age difference. I'm not against either one of them. I'd love if either one of them ended up being a quarterback, but I do believe Aaron Rodgers is in a different category of great and elite. I do. Um, And if you're getting Aaron Rodgers of the last two years, give me that. But anyway, uh, back to um, phone lines are open for that. Okay, what would your expectations of Russell Wilson be if he landed in D.C.? So just to reiterate, yesterday I, uh, yesterday I had the news that Russell Wilson would not be against a trade to Washington. I think that's a big deal because we talk so often about how no one would want to come to Washington. Nobody of that level. Like if they actually had a choice, would Washington be the choice? And I'm not even suggesting Washington would be the choice. I didn't say that. I'm just saying that he would not be against Washington. And went through some of the reasons as to why he wouldn't be against Washington. But let's get to the reality check on this. And I keep coming back to this. Why would Seattle trade him? I really do think not that this is the first year of this, but I think, you know, the playoffs kind of emphasized it even more. But I think we've been in this mode for a while now, you know, several years for sure, um, of, hey, you better get one of these elite guys or your chances just aren't that great. Your chances of being a sustained winner over a long period of time are basically nil. You know, your chances of winning a Super Bowl aren't great. Um, you can have the one season that Philly had, or that San Francisco had with Garoppolo, or that the Rams had with Goff, but more likely than not, the teams with elite quarterbacks are going to dominate the league in terms of overall wins, in the regular season, better seeding when you get to the postseason, and just a better chance overall in a one-and-done tournament of advancing. So you better get one of them. And Seattle has one of them. 
You know, many of you reached out to me yesterday actually suggesting that Russell Wilson, for whatever the price would be, and it would be expensive, just isn't worth it. You know, he's coming off the worst year of his career. Um, he wasn't that good on a team that went 7-10. and 10. You guys do know that he was hurt last year, right, and that he played hurt. Like, he had a damaged thumb for probably five to six of the games he played in, and he missed two or three games. But that aside, you know, I don't think that Russell Wilson's, like, that far off. Like, he's in decline. I wouldn't suggest that at all. I, I Look, could be wrong, and maybe the wear and tear, although Russell Wilson, as a dual-threat quarterback, has taken less hits over the years because he is – As good, I mean, he's Michael Vick good in terms of his vision and his ability to avoid the direct shot. But he's been sacked a hell of a lot over the years, as we know. You know, he'll hold on to it and he'll take a sack rather than throw it in completion. Um, But for those of you that want to look at, you know, the overall yardage this year and 25 touchdowns off of 40 the year before, you know, the fewest number of touchdowns that he's thrown since 2016. If you want to go back to the Super Bowl years and point to the Legion of, of, of Boom defense and how that was a defensive, you know, uh, uh, you know led team, um, look, they, they, were, they would never have gotten or sniffed the Super Bowl that they won or the Super Bowl that they got back to or all of the playoff games that he's played in um, without, or th- that they've played in without Russell Wilson, a quarterback. He has been an elite quarterback. If you want to say right now that there's like the Mahomes, Rodgers, if you want to throw Wilson into that category, and then there's another category below that that Wilson is in, I'm fine with that. But still, it's an elite level category. You know, we can sit here and debate whether or not he's the fifth best quarterback in the league or the seventh best quarterback in the league or the eighth. He's one of the guys that gives you a chance. I would prefer Aaron Rodgers for three years over Russell Wilson for five or six. I would. But um, but Russell Wilson would be a great consolation prize. So anyway, we talked about, you know, the fact that um, – He is not against coming to Washington, number one. Number two, why wouldn't he be against coming to Washington? We kind of outlined some of those reasons. But number three, you get to the reality reality of this. Why would Seattle trade him? Well, I don't think they will. Like, I, I just don't see why Seattle, who has one of these guys, would bring back their coaching staff, or much of it, Pete Carroll in particular, and say, hey, Pete, we want you to rebuild again. Nobody understands the significance of these of having elite quarterbacks like the teams that have them. You know, especially teams that didn't have them and he didn't have one when he got there. Okay, so I don't they got him under contract for the next 2 years. I know last year he kind of wanted to get traded. I think maybe there's a chance he wants to get traded again this year. Why does he want to get traded? That's an interesting question. You know, there are lots of different things that you can read out there. There are different conversations that I've had. You know, maybe the Pete Carroll, Russell Wilson relationship isn't great. You know, and they're, they've just tired of each other. You know, I've heard that maybe Russell Wilson can be a tiring figure for some. So maybe it's just run its course. And that combined with Russell Wilson wanting to get out of the Pacific Northwest and live in a bigger city, maybe a more cosmopolitan city, a more eclectic city, um, a, a city with uh, more access to New York. Again, 40 minutes on a private jet, boom, and you're in NYC from D.C. Um, maybe that's what he and his wife want now. By the way, Seattle's a beautiful city, beautiful area of the country. I spent a lot of time in Portland, Oregon, believe it or not, in the 90s. About a month out of every year for about five years. It's beautiful. I mean, just physically beautiful. Um, I wouldn't want to live there uh, year-round. But anyway, um, I don't think really that logic dictates, dictates that Seattle will move him. But then again, 
you know, this is going to be a conversation. He's been in the conversation for a while because he was in the conversation last year. So there's a chance that Seattle and Russell Wilson look at each other and Pete Carroll looks at, at Russ and says, you really don't want to be here. It's just fine. Let's work out a way to get you out of here. But then comes the other part of that. Like, I think it's, you know, I think it's less than 50-50 that they would trade him. And then I think if they did trade him, it's less than 50-50 that they would trade him to an NFC team. So that puts you in a, in the position of actually acquiring Russell Wilson. You're at a disadvantage. More likely than not, in my opinion, they won't trade him. And then if they do, more likely than not, they would be looking to trade him to an AFC team. I do, however, believe that the other part of that equation, that is if if he were available, that Washington would be aggressive going after him. I do believe that that's true. I don't know that. I'm not reporting that. But my gut tells me, based on everything that Ron Rivera has said, here in the offseason, and the way he has said it, like the way he said it to J.P. Finley, you know, about the need for a quarterback, um, when he called him dude. <laughs> That's the understatement of the year, dude, about us needing a quarterback. I do think that also, you know, intuitively, you combine what they've said publicly with the position they are in, you know, roughly – 10 to 12,000 season ticket holders. Like if you do the math on like Jason Wright's comment to the um to David Rubenstein at the Economic Club or whatever that was last week about an 80% increase. I mean, I don't know what their season their season ticket ba- base is somewhere between I would say 12,000 and 20,000. I mean, they've got to have the lowest season ticket base by far in the league at this point. You know, you combine that with the new name, the new brand, the new look, and all of the impact that that's had. They've got to win. They have got to splash here. But more than that, they've got to splash with something that leads to legitimate optimism that they can win right away. And so this is the kind of swing I'm expecting them to make. So, I don't think the odds favor Seattle trading him. And I think if they did trade him, I don't think the odds favor them trading him to an NFC team. But I do think that if he were on the block legitimately, Washington would be a player. Like, this would be... Like, we don't even know if Aaron Rodgers will be on the block. We don't know anything about Deshaun Watson's situation. And I will mention this real quickly, just as an aside. I think right now, our fan base, forget about what the media thinks or the Post thinks or, you know, Congress thinks. I think our fan base, the majority, the overwhelming majority would say, I don't care what Deshaun Watson did. Give me Deshaun Watson. Of the three, all things being equal in terms of personality and eligibility, etc., Deshaun Watson would be my number one because that is a 10-year answer of elite quarterbacking potential. But there's a lot of there's a lot of obstacle there to be cleared from the path to that. I you, you need to know a lot about his situation. You need to know that, you know, there's been some rehabilitation because you would think that he had actually a legitimate problem. And you gotta know that you're not bringing somebody into the community that is going to wreak havoc on happy ending joints all over town. But in terms of all things being equal, he would be my number one. I think Deshaun Watson is an elite quarterback, and I think his best is yet to come. And you're talking about, you know, an eight to ten year answer here. It's not what you're talking about with Russ or with Aaron, but I do think that Washington's going to swing. You know, they're going to take a big, massive cut here in the off season, and they're hoping that there's a ball to hit. You know, they're hoping that a Rodgers or 
a Wilson are legitimately available. And on Watson, I have no idea what the organization's thoughts are. I don't know if he's a complete and utter non-starter in terms of a conversation or not. I can only say what I believe to be true, and that is the majority, if not the significant majority, of those people that call themselves Washington football team fans or Washington commander fans or Washington Redskin fans would absolutely be, oh yeah, let's do it. Because the only thing I care about is winning. All right. Uh, 301-230-0980. 301-230-0980. Our Valor Home listener lines are open. I'm curious on Russell Wilson as to what you think his impact would be. Let's just say this whole thing plays out perfectly. He's not against it, which is true, that Seattle actually decides, okay, we'll trade you. And then thirdly, Washington is so taking the big swing that Seattle can't turn down their deal. You know, two firsts, a second, um, and Deron Payne. Uh, You know, whatever it takes. It's going to be hefty. (laughs) There's going to be competition. There are some desperate teams for a quarterback this year. And if he landed here, what would your expectations be? What would he produce here for this team? 301-230-0980, 301-230-0980. I'll give you my answer. Brendan will give you his answer, and I want yours next. It's the Kevin Sheehan Show on the Team 980, the Team980.com, and we're also on the Odyssey app. There are all kinds of smart speakers and connected devices. No matter what device you have, Odyssey has something you'll love. Blast your favorite music on home entertainment devices like Roku, Chromecast, Sonos, and more. Just look for the Odyssey app. Want to access more stations through your car? Try out Odyssey with Waze or Apple CarPlay. Plus, listen to your favorite stations on your phone with the Odyssey app. Listen to Odyssey anytime on all your smart speakers and connected devices. Odyssey. 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 At Papa Murphy's, we make delicious pizza. But I take it. I bake it to perfection, so I make the pizza. Whatever, Dad. So long as it makes it into my mouth. Papa Murphy's. We make great pizza, so you can make the pizza great. Order now at PapaMurphy's.com. In 1987, a former prosecutor named Margaret Kuhn took her dog for a walk in one of Louisiana's safest and most affluent parishes. The next morning, she was found dead on the side of the road. 34 years later, the crime remains unsolved. No one is safe. Binge the entire season of Gone South, Who Killed Margaret Kuhn? The hit documentary podcast from C13 Originals, available for free on the Odyssey app or wherever you listen to your podcasts.